I talk about remote monitoring, what I'm talking about uh, today is HMI and SCADA systems. Um, so the first thing, what is an information model? And an information model is real world objects and the relationships of those objects that have been virtualized. If you take your cell phone and you go into your contacts, you've got virtualized friends there, right? You've got John and Sue and Bob. Um, those are real world people, but you've got a virtual representation of those things sitting in your, your, uh, your cell phone. So that in itself is a small information model. And the purpose of information models is to uh, provide clarity and organization and improve communication between different people in different groups. Information models are often a bridge too between the technical and less technical portions of, a, of an organization. A lot of the things that, that we hear a lot from uh, managers and uh, senior management within companies when they're trying to get information off the factory floor is they actually have to go to engineers in order to get the information. They shouldn't need to do that. Um, information models can help provide a much easier and logical way of looking at information that people that aren't technical can use in order to get access to that, that kind of data. And information models help um, with productivity. You can't have a workflow without having some sort of information model that that workflow is operating on. Um, so information models are really uh, key to providing the automation that helps drive our companies, not only just on the factory floor, but even internal processes and things like that. With an information model, we don't create HMI screens for a particular instance of things anymore. We create it for a type of them. There's a gentleman here that left that has 20,000 assets of some sort that he's monitoring. Um, you can create a, an HMI screen for a type of thing and then reuse that with any instance of that all the way through your organization. And it just flows naturally. This just you know, just works. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Another thing that happens is if there's changes uh, in the system. A lot of the older HMI systems, if you know the engineers come along and say, well we, we threw out this old PLC and we got a new one and every address has changed. Um, or there was an error. You have to open up the graphics designer, we gotta grab the screen, we gotta redo the bindings, we may have to republish those screens, and we have to get those screens in the compliant machines. It could actually be a major operation just to do, you know, just to be able to change one little memory address in an HMI system. Um, with information models, you know, again, we have the HMI bound directly to the model. If a memory address would happen to change, so, I don't care. It didn't affect my HMI at all. HMI is all bound up to the model, right? Back end is changing, does not have any impact on how um, the front end of the graphics is affected. Another thing with the old style HMI SCADA systems is quite often we would have to have the OPC servers or the PLCs in place. With an information model, we don't care if those PLCs or that back end stuff is present. As long as they have the model, I can create all of the screens and graphics and everything that I need without any of those data sources being present. Graphics designers create the front ends, and this can be a cost savings as well, right? I'm sure you can get graphics design people or other people in your organization to build these HMI screens at a much cheaper cost than you have. You would have if you're paying software engineers or, or uh, hardware engineers to build those screens. Hardware engineers, they just need to worry about the back end. Place they need to be doing what they do best. Um, so what I've been talking about so far is how information modeling is going to really profoundly change how an HMI and SCADA systems work. It's going to make it a lot more powerful, a lot more efficient in building things. Um, we're going to be able to get a lot more information out of those screens to be able to do our jobs effectively. And information models can have just as a profound influence on other types of software that we use within our facilities as it does for HMI and SCADA. And ideally what we'd like in a perfect world is we would like to have these different software systems all talking to each other and working together, right? Um, it would be great if they were all operating on the same information model. 
might imply that the mobile, my motor starts to draw too much current, a uh, work order gets generated well, that the maintenance technician needs to go take a look at it, or a purchase order gets generated to, you know, replace the part or, or replace that motor entirely. Um, but trying to get all kinds of different software to talk together is a daunting task. We all know that. Um, trying to do any kind of software integration is extremely painful. Um, and is there anything out there that you know can really do this in the real world? Yeah. Um, the OPC UA can do this. The OPC Foundation is a group. I'm sure most of you here probably know. Um, you know, it's 150 companies, all of the largest. Companies involved in industrial automation are members of the OPC Foundation. And the OPC Foundation has um, created over several years OPC UA, which is a specification for um, solving a bunch of problems, right? OPC UA has defines how an information model uh, can be implemented, a generic one. Um, it has communications architecture within it, services oriented, so we can use HTTP, it's web friendly, it's cross platform. Um, the OPC Foundation has built toolkits that are available on in all kinds of different platforms that you can use to build both clients and servers. Um, so the world does exist out there where we can actually sometimes one of the models is back into the controllers, depending on what the application is doing. Um, client applications are consuming live data, historical data, alarms. This is all built into the OPC UA specification. And it's not just HMI and SCADA clients, right? It could be analytics software packages, it could be reporting software packages that are pulling information out of this model. Um, you know, it could be other enterprise, other enterprise applications that are pulling information out of this model. It's not just HMI and uh, SCADA clients that are, are using it. You're going to start seeing a blurring of features, right? There's a feature you may have in your HMI SCADA that you may also have in your, your maintenance management system. We start overlapping the, you know, the delineation that was really cut and dry between these different kinds of software is going to start going away, and the areas going to start to blur. One area that we've seen uh, is changing, in particular, is maintenance management and SCADA. And I mentioned that earlier that it's perfectly natural that if a motor is, you know, current is start, starting to draw too much current, that a work order gets generated and goes to the maintenance system. Right? These things are very closely related. This is just one example of how we're going to start seeing the software, you know, merging more together. Um, so having that OPC UA server on that hardware, what it does is it gets rid of some software, right? We don't need the OPC server anymore. We don't need proprietary drivers. So there's less software. As soon as there's less software, there's a bunch of things that jump out at you. First off, you're going to get better performance. There's less complexity. There's fewer points of failure. You're going to have a more stable system now. Um, less expensive, I'm going to have to go and buy an OPC server. Less pieces of software to configure, it's going to be cheaper to deploy. The ramifications of this just keep going on and on. Um, and in some cases, you know, the systems that we're going to end up with now are more secure. Right? I mentioned that even that OPC server running on that little piece of hardware, that OPC server is going to be talking encrypted to the clients. And to even communicate with that piece of hardware, you need to authenticate yourself against it. To make sure that you're um, somebody that has permission to even be talking to them. And of course, OPC UA uh, runs on Windows and non-Windows platforms. The other takeaway for information modeling with HMI SCADA systems, um, the way that HMI SCADA systems are built is going to rapidly change considerably once you start introducing information models. It's going to give you a much, much better system that has better organization in it. Um, you'll be able to deploy things faster. You're going to have reduced development time. Um, you know, a couple of the gentlemen were here earlier talking about managing 20,000 assets. You can't do that unless you've got real organization behind you. And information models provide that infrastructure in order for that to work. We're going to see better interoperability, new capabilities. Like I said, I'm, I'm expecting you're going to start seeing HMI and maintenance management systems start merging into one kind of a solution in the future moving forward. That's all that I have.